working on your memory actually increases your confidence when you're going into a presentation or a job interview. I can't tell you how many times where I spent time focusing on just remembering names and coming back later at an event, two, three day event, and remembering that person's name after meeting hundreds of people throughout the weekend, how impactful that was and really sets you apart. What's up everybody and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Now, we talked about an exercise and I'd love to give our audience an exercise that'd be fun for them to start working on their memory. Now that we know it's something we can train and improve no matter where we are in terms of we, how we view our memory. Yeah, sure, let's, let's start with that. So what I wanna teach you here, just a short glimpse into that, is the memory palace, because that's the most powerful method. It's already 2000 years old. So the old ancient Greeks used that to give speeches and uh, it sounds a bit wild to use techniques which are 2000 years old, but they work pretty well. So let's uh, dive into it. So what we first need is a memory palace. And a memory palace is a sequence of locations, for example, through your apartment. So um, let's imagine yourself in front of your apartment, AJ. So you're standing in front of the front door and that's the first location is your door, okay? And then you go inside and look to the right, what is there? What is uh, next to the door? What is it, AJ? The guest bathroom. The guest bathroom, okay. So let's take the guest bathroom. So that's location number two. So if you pass by, what is next? The dining room. The whole dining room, but let's say you don't use the whole room, but enter the room and what is next to the door here? Is it a table or a board or what is it? Yeah, there's a bench. The bench, okay. So we have door, we have bathroom, we have bench. What comes next? Then it would be the full dining room table. The dining room table is number four, okay. Let's do seven, what comes next? Okay, then there's the kitchen island. Okay, number five, number six. There would be the sofa. Okay, and number seven. The television. Okay, so everyone knows right now how it looks in your apartment, nice. So please recall the first seven. <laughs> So door, bathroom, bench, table, island, couch, TV. Perfect, easy. So that's your memory palace right now. And that's the tool we use to memorize a shopping list right now. Just easy one. And... Uh, um, um, so you um, would tie each item to yes. each specific uh, place. And, and Johnny, what do you want to buy? It's your shopping list. Okay. First one, first item. Uh -oh. Uh, steak. Steak, okay. And what you do now is you connect it to the door. So door. you imagine yourself in front of your front door, you're opening the door and it's smelling like nice steak and or the door <laughs> is made of steak, something like that. But the important thing is you have to see it in your mind and smell it in your mind and you have to trust the method. So don't go back and back and back, but just go with the story. Okay, second item. Hot sauce It is the bathroom on the right. Okay, hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. So how do you memorize it in your bathroom, AJ? I'm picturing it next to the, <laughs> the sink and the soap to wash my hands. <laughs> okay, next item, Johnny. Uh, sparkling water. Sparkling water on the bench. So what do you imagine? I would say it's like there's some fountain out of the bench. It's like sparkling water. You're coming home and you're so happy about your fountain. So you get a nice drink here from the water fountain. Uh, the sparkling water uh, fountain here. Okay, number four, Johnny. Uh, uh, number four will be eggs. Eggs, okay. The uh, um, location number four was a table, right? Yes, correct. So room. what's your story? I'm, I'm picturing a chicken walking around the table <laughs> laying eggs. Now we are getting close to it. So you're making creative and uh, like <laughs> not the normal realistic story, and yeah, maybe you smash the eggs on the table. Everything is over the place and yeah, it's, it's maybe two days old. It smells quite, mm, okay. And uh, what's number five, item number five? Candles. Candles. So my kitchen island is on fire, <laughs> covered in, in wax. Because of candles, so you didn't. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. 
Number I had to light candles because of Johnny's cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> special, special Okay, steak. two to go. Johnny, what's the next item? Uh, next item will be apples. Apples. Yes. AJ. Okay. I'm picturing my dog Puppers <laughs> sitting next to a bushel of apples on the, the couch that he's trying to eat. He's pretty okay, happy. Okay, so we have apples. the dog there. Nice. <laughs> cool. And last item, Johnny. Bananas. Bananas. Television. So I'm I'm picturing the uh, the woman from Chiquita Banana <laughs> on the TV <laughs> juggling bananas. Okay, it's a question is you want to buy a woman or bananas? But anyway, so uh, um, let's let's see if you memorize them correctly. So what are the items? Steak, mm -hmm. hot sauce, sparkling water, eggs, candles, apples. Bananas. Perfect. Easy. And you could also do that backwards. It's no big deal about that because you just go backwards through your memory palace. And that technique just doesn't work for seven, but it also works for what, 20 or 40 or even 100. Wow. Wow. That's actually my grocery list weekly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. He doesn't, he doesn't need to memorize it, but now I sadly have Johnny's grocery list memorized. <laughs> So he can call you then and ask for Simple that. pleasures. <laughs> yeah, so next week when I visit you, Johnny, before the boot camp, <laughs> I, I have your shopping list memorized. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and the cool thing is you will be able to recall it even tomorrow because it's mm -hmm. connected now to the locations. And uh, it's, it's really about that connection. Making a story, create a connection, and then uh, you will be able to memorize even more. And so what I start or what I would um, suggest to start with, create a memory palace through your apartment, write down 10 words, 20 words, and connect them to the locations, and you will see, works pretty well. See, and now you don't need pages open on your phone in your list. You're right. using your mind. It's like a secret uh, notebook. Um, right. There's one, or like secret cheating papers for school kids. So you're just walking through there, room in their mind uh, during the class test and there is everything so yeah we drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified and in order to do that you're gonna have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and if you've gotten a lot of value out of this make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends so is this because i already have my home memorized because I live in it, it's something that is visually cued in my mind. I could walk through it blindfolded in the middle of the night, no lights on and know exactly where I am. That's what I'm using to link my existing memory to something that I need to memorize in the future. Exactly, so this memory palace is your tool, which you already have, and then you connect it to other items. Um, I have, you have seven locations now, and I have about 2,000 locations in different places in the world. I'm not living in a palace, so no worries. It's just uh, 30 in my apartment. But uh, there is the apartment of my mother. There is the shopping mall. There is the park. There is the hotel in Las Vegas, for example, which I visited once. And uh, I'm still walking through these locations, using them when I try to memorize stuff. So um, it's quite also nice memories. So you are always there walking through um, former buildings. Speaking of Vegas, I live here and perhaps you and I will have to have a separate conversation. You know what I mean, Johannes? So I need to make a little money out here. <laughs> I see. I'm not sure if that's allowed uh, today. It was back then, there was no problem, but uh, there was has been this 21 movie, maybe you said yeah. that. 21. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, they changed everything. So it's quite tough, but let's have a <laughs> private talk. And let's see if we can get something out of it. Johnny's going to be arrested at his memory palace. <laughs> yeah. So we can use this not only for a shopping list, but if we have a big presentation coming up where we have key points that we want to get across, or even a job interview where we've prepped our answers and we want to be able to mention those key words when we're responding. And that leads to confidence. Right? You're exactly. not second guessing yourself or mm -hmm. facing doubt. So working on your memory actually increases your confidence when you're going into a presentation or a job interview or even socially and you're meeting people for the first time. I can't tell you how many times where I spent time focusing on just remembering names 
and coming back later at an event, two, three day event, and remembering that person's name after meeting hundreds of people throughout the weekend, how impactful that was and really sets you apart in a networking situation. Now, are there any other techniques or strategies that maybe aren't 2,000 years old that you were excited to learn in your journey? Hmm. Actually, no. I mean, it's a bit too <laughs> simple, too simple to phrase it like that because it's all about visualizing images. And this memory palace method is the main key to all the other disciplines or all the other techniques. Uh, for example, if you want to learn like uh, vocabulary, you also would try to memorize the word by memorizing an image. Um, I'm not sure, do you speak any foreign language? Well, my, my memory of my French training from high school and college is, is fading. I wish I would have known the memory palace back then when I was taking exams. Yeah, so, um, I mean, the, the key part is always to, even if it's a foreign word which you don't understand, try to create an image out of that. Um, it's quite tough now to find a good example here in English because you know that word already, but maybe a foreign word like, uh, like a German word, let's see. Uh, I mean, do you have anything you want to learn in German right now? Johnny, you, you know some German. I, I only know one phrase, ich heiß Johnny, <laughs> wie heißt du? Okay, so... Uh, I'm sure that was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's always about, let's say you have the Spanish word casa, casa. And casa oh. means house, okay? So what you do is you have this word casa and you have to think about something what, you, what that word reminds you of in your native language. So casa in English, what, what is it close to? What could it be? You, castle. Castle, yeah. So you think about, about a castle and you think about a small castle. A small castle is a house. Or you have casa and you say, okay, casa is a bit like case. And then you say, okay, you lose your case in the house or something. And um, yeah, and that's, that's actually the story. This um, method is called the keyword method. So if you want to look it up, uh, you can find a lot of stuff about that. The keyword method and the internet. We're learning vocabulary. Now we love asking every guest what their X factor is, what it is that makes you extraordinary. I have a feeling that we <laughs> might know what your answer is, but what do you think has helped you become an extraordinary memory champion? Um, it's a mixture. I mean, this is my, my whole story about overcoming uh, depression and going to... At some point I have to decide I have to use a wheelchair. I didn't want to use it, but um, to become the world champion, I have to go to a world championship. And without a wheelchair, I wasn't able to walk anymore really good. It was just falling down the floor. And I had to make the decision. And uh, this point in my life, when I was crying and I was depressed, and I was like, I want to be a world champion. And I have to do everything in my power to do that. And it, it's not just about training. It's about doing more than that, doing the right, making the right decision. And I think that was a crucial point. And that's my, I'm not sure if that's an X factor, but it's the, it is the moment when everything changed for me, not, not on sport, but over time and making the decision and finding out what is necessary to achieve your goals. Sometimes it's not what you think of. It's not just training, it's even more. It's maybe ending a bad relationship or it's maybe about uh, overcoming a depression or getting a wheelchair, whatever. And that was my key point here. And now, yeah, of course, my X factor is I have a, a really good memory if I want to have. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can our audience find out more about you and the training that you offer your clients? Yeah, just visit my website. It's just my name, Johannes. And then there's a minus or a hyphen. I, I think you say hyphen. Uh, Mellow.com. And uh, Johannes minus Mellow.com or on Memory Spots TV on YouTube. Both are quite nice sources. So it would be nice to hear from you. And thank you very much for letting me be on the show here. Hope you will remember the items. Uh, for Johnny next week, so. Yes. I, I already remember, and I'm going backwards <laughs> now. Cool. Yeah, hopefully many people might start with memory sports right now because in the US there are not too many, but the three times world memory champion is from the US, so Alex Mullen, and uh, maybe you are the next one out there, so <laughs> let's get uh, into it. And is that is that the the most championships ever won? Is that three? It's not, because back in the days, in the 90s, there was someone, Dominic O'Brien from the UK, who won eight times. 
Uh, but uh, Alex is still a young competitor. He is 29 and he start, just started in 2014. Okay, seven years ago, but uh, he was the first from, one from the US uh, going to the number one spot in the world ranking. And uh, he grabbed some world records from me, which was not very kind, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, he's already a friend and uh, it's always nice to get in touch with all these people all around the world. And when is your next competition? My next competition is next weekend, um, middle of August, and it is uh, in a, it's an online competition. So um, I am also doing a Twitch stream on it, and it's in the middle of the night for me. My first match is 4 a.m. in the night. An uh, interesting experience to compete at this time. Let's see how it works, but I'm quite of a late night person, so uh, maybe not that late, but I try my best to have a good competition. And what is your Twitch username for our audience? Who wants it's to also Memory Sports TV. Easy to memorize. Memory Sports TV. And uh, that's it. Awesome. Right. Well, go enjoy some smoky whiskey. Johnny and I appreciate you. Yes. Uh, I will. And hopefully you have a nice uh, weekend. Thanks. Goes good with you steak. Too. Thank you so much. Steak <laughs> and eggs and hot sauce and everything. Bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>